Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. In last week's blog I showed you the five reasons why you need to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. If you haven't read, watched or listened to the update, you can check it out by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's blog I want to talk about the five questions you need to ask when the intensive care team is talking about futility of treatment, withdrawal of life support or about withdrawal of treatment. No other situation or topic in intensive care is causing more emotion, discomfort, angst, controversy and irritation than end of life situations and all the situations and discussions that lead up to it. And rightly so, because life is extremely precious. More importantly, you need to be highly sensitized and alert whenever the intensive care team is talking about futility of treatment, withdrawal of life support or about withdrawal of treatment, especially when it relates to your critically ill loved one's treatment. After more than 15 years intensive care nursing experience in three different countries, I have been involved in many end-of-life situations and I have seen many situations where the intensive care team has positioned critically ill patients prognosis, diagnosis and their ongoing treatment as futile. Futility of treatment is also defined as justification of a decision not to pursue certain and ongoing medical treatment that may be requested or demanded by patients or their surrogates. Withdrawal of life support and withdrawal of treatment are in the same category than futility of treatment and the reality in intensive care is that the difference between the three statements is negligible and grey as they all have the same end goal in mind which is basically not to extend treatment and let a patient approach their end of life and die. And this may well be in the best interest of a critically ill patient and their family. However, in many cases, futility of treatment, withdrawal of life support and or withdrawal of treatment are strong statements to make by the intensive care team and you need to know and understand why the intensive care team positions your critically ill loved one's prognosis and diagnosis that way and how this positioning may impact on the course of your, your families and most importantly your critically ill loved one's trajectory of their stay in intensive care. You also need to have your and your family's positioning worked out when entering those discussions because otherwise the intensive care team will make decisions for you and for your critically ill loved one if you come unprepared and the intensive care team will walk all over you and make decisions that suits the intensive care unit's needs and not your and your critically ill loved one's needs. Your positioning during those discussions is so important that I can't stress enough that the intensive care team is prepared to pull the plug on your critically ill loved one if you don't have your act together, so to speak. After all, you, your family and your critically loved one are in a unique and a often once in a lifetime situation that is defining the rest of your life. Therefore, you want to have as much information, support and education available that gets you through this difficult situation. Whenever you're faced with a challenge like end of life in intensive care, there are a multitude of questions you need to ask and it's important that you approach this topic rationally and that you put your emotions aside for a moment. Most importantly, after having been involved in many end of life situations in intensive care, I have found that you need to ask five distinct questions regarding the positioning of the intensive care team as it relates to futility of treatment, withdrawal of life support and or withdrawal of treatment in your critically ill loved one's situation because as it relates to other areas in life as well in order to find the right answers you need to ask the right questions. Number one, does your critically ill loved one's treatment cost too much time, money and resources that the intensive care team doesn't want to invest? Intensive care is a place that is resource intensive and one day in intensive care costs 
three to five thousand dollars per day or two to three thousand pounds per day in the UK. Therefore, besides the clinical condition and prognosis of your critically ill loved one, the intensive care team is looking at your critically ill loved one's condition and prognosis as a business case and will position your loved one's case accordingly. Imagine your loved one being in ICU with a severe head injury and a recovery might only be possible after many weeks in intensive care. Would it be easier for the intensive care team to say that treatment is futile and that they would therefore withdraw treatment or withdraw life support for obvious reasons? Number two, are there other admissions awaiting treatment in intensive care and are they competing for scarce and expensive intensive care beds? Beds and staff in intensive care are limited in numbers and they tend to be in high demand. If a patient gets discharged, the next patient is generally not far away and the bed in ICU never really gets cold. What if your critically ill loved one is in an already fully occupied intensive care unit and the intensive care team knows that in the next few days they will be overstretching their capacity? The intensive care team knows that they have many patients within the hospital awaiting surgery and some of those patients therefore need a bed in intensive care. If they don't empty some of those beds, they will have disgruntled patients, disgruntled surgeons and anaesthetists and a disgruntled hospital administration. Therefore, often the easiest way out of the dilemma is to sell to you and your family that the treatment of your critically ill loved one is futile. Again, you need to be highly aware and highly sensitive about those moving parts in intensive care because if you're not, the intensive care team might let your loved one die. Number three, does the intensive care team has a limited mindset and doesn't believe in the recovery and the treatment of your critically ill loved one? A limited or an abundant mindset can make a big difference in intensive care. If the intensive care team has a limited mindset and doesn't believe that your critically ill loved one will recover, it's a big challenge and something that can be turned around by your and by your family's positioning. Often intensive care units with a limited mindset also have a negative culture within. They also tend to have negative outlooks and if you and your family find yourself in such a limiting and inhibiting culture and mindset, your job is to challenge it and ask for what you want. Many intensive care units have a positive culture and also abundant mindsets and therefore they therefore have optimistic outlooks. I have written a blog about culture in intensive care and how it impacts on your critically ill loved one's treatment. If you look in the text version of this video, you can click on the link to this article. Number four, does the intensive care think does the intensive care team think it's sexy to continue treating your critically ill loved one? I know that this is a strong statement to make. You must know, however, that in some intensive care units, the latest technology that can save somebody's life, such as ECMO, balloon pump, high frequency oscillation ventilation, and many other of the latest technologies that may be used for your critically ill loved one's recovery, might be of interest for the intensive care team to use as it's perceived as sexy and interesting and it gets people excited. If none of those treatments or equipment is available or perceived as an option, again, the intensive care team may position your critically ill loved one's treatment as futile. Number five, does the intensive care team perceive you and your family as weak or strong and do they think you have any knowledge about the intensive care environment? This is another very important question you need to ask yourself and you need to have an awareness whether you and your family are perceived as weak or as strong by the intensive care team. If the intensive care team thinks that you and your family take everything for face value and that you don't question, you're improving the likelihood that the intensive care team suggests to you and to your family to withdraw treatment or to withdraw life support and you have no control, power and influence. If on the other hand you and your family are perceived as strong, knowledgeable, powerful and influential, you are taking matters in your own hands and you are able to have control, influence and power. How you can get control, power, impact and influence? If you want to have control, power and influence whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care and if you want to be perceived as strong influential, impactful and knowledgeable 
by the intensive care team. And if you want to be in control of your and your critically ill loved one's destiny, and if you want to make an impact, download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you'll learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability, five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you understand what's really happening. How you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. With your free instant impact report you'll also get four other free reports and the reports you will be receiving are the six questions you need to ask the most senior doctor in intensive care, ten things you didn't know doctors and nurses are talking about while you're not at the bedside with your loved one, the seven answers to the seven most frequently asked questions if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care and nine myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I hope that this episode has helped you on how you can change the intensive care team's perception about you and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our Your Questions Answered section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week with another update.